This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we will be reviewing Chanel's Les Eaux range, actually one of from the Les Eaux range, Paris Biarritz, uh, the Eau de Toilette. And as you can see, I have used quite a bit. I bought this one the day it was released, so it's been a couple of years now. So it's the first formulation. I, I, I do not know if they reformulated it. To me, it always smells the same. I mean, Paris Biarritz, there's not much you can reformulate here, to be honest with you. But I have done first impressions and unboxing of this one. And at a certain point, one of my subscribers brought it to my attention, said, Jacob, when are you going to review Paris Biarritz? I was like, I already did. But no, I didn't. <laughs> so now I'm going to do it. I totally it slipped through the cracks somehow. I thought I reviewed it. Mm, let's spray it on. So as I said, this is the first formulation. I do not know if they reformulated it since its inception. But, oh, this is interesting. I haven't used it in a while. So the little silver spray nozzle, you know, it gets kind of a little bit of a patina. So you got to clean it up to glossify it again. Mmm. Oh, it's aged very well, I have to say. It's almost more interesting now than it was when I first smelt it. You see, perfumes need a little bit of heft, a little bit of air. They need a little bit of time to mature. Huh? And um, before I get to sniffing it further, if you love my channel and you like to come back and watch it over and over again, consider subscribing. Click that subscription button today and, you know, become a subscriber of the channel because it's re it really helps the channel a lot if you subscribe. It doesn't cost you nothing, but it helps the channel a lot because then YouTube says, hey, cool, we can promote this channel more because people seem to really be subscribing to it. Also, you can become a member of my channel, push the join button, and get extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dick of All Spilled Together. So thank you so much to my patrons and my members. And I would also like to thank, uh, on the side here I have my, scroll, my chat scrolling with all the wonderful viewers who are co-reviewing live, uh, because I'm live streaming this review, who are co-reviewing live with me this fragrance. Mmm, I love it in the opening notes. It's so zesty. And I, I, I'm saying this, I wanted to review this perfume, by the way, whenever in the future you might be watching this review, just to let you know, I'm reviewing it in winter. So, uh, it's January now, and I decided to review it in winter because this is a fragrance most people wear in summer. And it's easy to wear this one in summer because it allows you to be alive, and so it refreshes you if you're sweaty and sticky in summer. But... Not many people talk about this one, and not many people wear this one in winter. But now that I've sprayed it in winter, it really works. It, it's zest in the evening. This is not a morning fragrance for winter. I feel it's too fresh for that. You need something more warm in winter mornings. This one is kind of once the day is gone, you've went through heat and, I mean, warm situations, cold situations, you've drank your coffee, you wore your sweater, the this and the that, and then you get to a point where you could just zest up a little bit, refreshen up in between things in winter, in the winter night or evening. And that's what this one is really good for. Um, and um, so it, uh, yeah, came out um, a couple of years ago, 2018. Um, Olivier Polge is the nose behind this one. It was supposed to be released as an Eau de Cologne. The entire Les Eaux range by Chanel, Paris Venice, Paris Biarritz, Paris Deauville, and subsequently one year later released Paris Riviera, as well as what is coming next, Paris Edinburgh. All of them were supposed to be Colognes, but the marketing team decided, let's make them cost more. Let's just call them Eau de Toilette. But they are colognes. They are supposed to be waters. They're called Lizou for a reason, right? Although I have made a video on my top favorite 10 colognes, so you should check out that video as well. In the description box down below is the link, but also in the card section up here. Colognes are not... A cologne doesn't automatically mean that it's a light little waterlet, like a little water thing. No. It can have heft. It can be super, super intense as a cologne. But... Les Eaux de Chanel is a range that was conceived as waters, as freshness, right? So Biarritz of, of the four that I have smelled thus far, because Paris Edinburgh has not officially been released yet, of the four, Paris Biarritz is the lightest 
of the waters, of Chanel's waters, all four conceived uh, by Olivier Polge. Um, so, uh, the text describing this perfume says, In 1915, Gabriel Chanel discovered Biarritz, this, hev uh, this haven of peace by the sea, immediately captivates us uh, with its simultaneously sporty and sophisticated atmosphere. She chooses this place to open her first couture house in a villa opposite the casino. The elegant yet comfortable lines attract an international clientele and mark the birth of Chanel. Paris Biarritz captures the dynamism uh, and freedom of this founding city like a breath of fresh air. Paris Biarritz is announced as an ex um, exceptionally fresh and vivacious scent inspired by the energy of the Basque coast, the fragrance contains sparkling fruity notes of, Sicil of Sicilian tangerine and lily of the valley. Um, it was first available as 125 ml. Uh, they also have it as a 50 ml bottle. I have purchased the 50 ml bottle as well the minute it came out because then I can travel with it. 125, when, you, when you're on flights, you can't carry it on because it's 25 mil over the limit that they let you carry on. I haven't been flying since a year because of, of the lockdown, so it's not like it matters, but I did purchase the 50 mil way before the lockdown even was a thing. So, um, the uh, top notes, tangerine, orange, bergamot, lemon, and grapefruit. Now, they're all citrus notes. All of them. Citrus fruits, citrus fruits, citrus fruits, citrus fruits. It's five of them, and they're all citruses. And, but they are the highest quality citruses that you can have. They, they smell of quality citruses. <laughs> they really do. They really do. Now, I'm not a huge fan of citrusy notes, except in Pour Monsieur, which is my favorite Chanel perfume of all time. Check out the review of that one. I've done dozens of reviews on Pour Monsieur. The Eau de Toilette, not the Eau de Parfum, the Eau de Toilette only. It smells of really good citrus oils utilized and it, they're good quality. But, here's the but. A lot of people don't like uh, Paris Biarritz because uh, what happens in the middle notes? The, in the middle notes, we get green notes, neroli, and lily of the valley. Base notes, white musk and patchouli. The patchouli is almost, you don't really sense it. White musk is a very synthetic musk. But it's, you see, this one virtually doesn't have warmth in it. Musk could be warm, but it's not perceived as warm within this fragrance. We're gonna to get to the dry down later on, but let's just go to why this perfume is often not really liked by people. First of all, you either like citruses or you don't. I am not a big fan of them, but I am a huge fan of them when they are done in the right way, when the citrus really smells expensive. This one smells expensive. Problem, mixing citruses with Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley, is a very poisonous flower. You know, it can kill you if you eat it. Don't ever eat it. <laughs> but the smell of it is a very particular, also green smell. Now, in the mid notes, we have the green notes, Lily of the Valley and Neroli. Neroli is, again, orange-esque in the way it smells, like orangey. And then you got those green notes mixed with Lily of the Valley. Lily of the Valley is a poisonous kind of green smell. So, it's... There's a bitterness to it, to this perfume, that um, smells of salty Mediterranean breeze, which can be sometimes a bit fishy. Not The perfume isn't fishy at all, but that the Mediterranean, is it's not an ocean, it's a sea. It can be stagnant. Some, at times it can be stinky. It doesn't always smell of fresh waters. It can go stale. Um, not that this one goes stale, but it has a heft to it. It's a bit heavy. Despite it being a, a, a water, a les eaux, you know, it, it does have a bit of a heavy note to it. It's not easily lovable, you know. But every ingredient used in here is really of good quality. It might be toned down. It is a water lit at the end of the day. It is, a you know, it is what it is. But that little something it delivers is really good in the quality. So it's like you got to get accustomed to appreciating certain flavors, certain tastes. You know, little kids hate coffee. It's too bitter for them. you got to learn to appreciate the taste of coffee. I always mention this example um, uh, when talking about getting used to certain tastes and flavors. When I first tasted uh, 
a gentian flower root in form of tea and grappa. Uh, oh my God, I was disgusted. It is the most bitter flavor I have ever tasted in my life. And it's just so bitter and dry that you just taste it and you spit it out and you're like, oh my God, give me something sweet just to cover up. I have to wash this out of my mouth. But with time, you learn a flavor. And mind you, I said on purpose, I didn't say you learn to appreciate a flavor. No, you learn a flavor. Your olfactive senses learn it. They've never known it before. They've never experienced it before. So when they experience it for the first time, it's new to them. So of course it's a shock. And shocks are often translated by our psyche through non-pleasant experiences. But sometimes it's not that it wasn't pleasant technically, it's just that it was unknown and it's a new factor that entered your life. So you kind of get you kind of have to learn to flavor it, learn to taste it, learn to smell it. And Biarritz has that aspect to it that um it, it, it kind of, you got to learn it. Uh, you, and um, I'm not, this is not my favorite of the four. I have them all here, actually. So we have Paris Venice. Then um, I'm on my second bottle of Paris Deauville. This is my favorite one. So we're on the second bottle already. And actually, I also have a 50 ml bottle half you. So you could, I have a full... One of these full used up, started using up a 50 mil when I used to travel, and now this one. And then Paris Riviera. So you could check out all of these reviews on my channel. I've reviewed all of them, unboxed all of them, reviewed all of them. So it's like, of these four, the one I use the least is Paris uh, Biarritz. Because it requires work. <laughs> and... I was just never really ready. I mean, I used up half a bottle. It's not like I don't use it. I use it, okay? And I enjoy it. But of the four, this is not the one I enjoy the most. And this is interesting. I This might happen in the future because it is the one that's most complicated uh, of the four or of the five. I haven't smelled Edinburgh yet. But this one might just turn out to be my favorite one in a year or two when I'm ready for it. You know what I mean? I've used up half a bottle, but I'm still learning it. It's still not giving me everything that I would need to fall in love with it. And But I do believe that it is already giving me everything I need. It's just that I cannot interpret it properly. It's I'm still not ready for it. Uh, it might just be the most complex of the four released to date. I, I know it sounds simple in its construction. Um, it seems quite simplistic in the way it's conceived but I think within that simplicity there is um, you need to be a master perfumer to be able to deliver something so simple but so on point um, and it is bitter and you need to understand bitter to like it so it's it's complex and I'm trust you me I might wait I might just in two years time or a year time make another video about this to tell you guys hey by the way this has turned out to be my favorite of the Lazoos because I just needed a lot of time to realize that it is my favorite. It'll just like it took me years to realize that Paul Monsieur is actually a masterpiece. Years. It took me years to, all of a sudden, it just clicked. When the time was right, it just clicked, and I was like, oh, now I, now I get it. And since then, obsessed. Obsessed. The bottle itself is a masterpiece as well. This is very reminiscent of 30s Cologne bottle, perfume bottles by Chanel. Uh, so um, Olivier Paul brought it back uh, with a creative team this you know usually we're used to seeing rectangular shaped bottles by chanel but in the 20s and 30s a lot of the chanel bottles were rounded like this so this is a very very beautiful beautiful call back to quintessential quintessential chanel from the 20s and 30s so these bottles in themselves are just divine very thin glass super elegant a masterpiece in in um engineering really because they are also very fragile but they're just so reminiscent of the 20s and 30s. They really, really bring you back in time. So I always say, you know, the bottle and the packaging are also part of the fragrance and they have to be a part of the whole experiment or experiencing a fragrance. And with the Lesus, they've nailed it. Chanel has nailed it with the beautiful, beautiful bottles and packaging. And the packaging being like super sleek, it's the inside. They utilize the paper that they would use inside a uh 
a perfume box. So you would have a glossy perfume box, and inside the glossy perfume box you have that kind of cardboard thing that protects the bottle. They've turned that cardboard thing into the outer shell, into the outer box of these lezus, making it super simple. They've simplified it to the core. It's so elegant, you guys. And they put stickers on these. These are not printed, so of course they age with time. They, they yellow with time. It's a beautiful paper quality, but uh, it has a mattified aspect to it and it does absorb anything around it so it does yellow with time so you get that vintagey vibe with these the more time passes the more time passes and the more I think we need to close up a little bit just to see if I can get the sticker to I mean there are like angles to it that you can see but you can't really see that the sticker has a texture to it all right yeah okay so it does it, it there's this paper has a texture to it. It's not like a flat, cheap, glossy paper. It is a textured, beautiful quality paper. So all of these details contribute to me loving a perfume. The bottles are just divine. You got the double C logo here, but also double C logo hiding inside at the bottom. Oh, there you see a little bit inside the double C at the bottom, bottom of the tab. Anyway, it is divine for what it is. Now, it's very orangey. What does it give me? Very, very tangerine. To me, it gives me more tangerine and orange than it does bergamot in the opening. In winter, summer may be a different issue. And it has a slightly delicate, delicate powdery touch. Just a hint of powder, and that's because of the musk. That musk is there not to be smelt out as musk, but the musk in uh, Paris Biarritz is there to create an illusion of, of dryness, of dryness, because you're supposed to wear it in the heat in summer when you're all sweaty and wet, so you need to smell of something dry. In winter, this dry feeling really is much more enhanced than in summer, and I'm loving that dry feeling. I am actually enjoying Paris Biarritz much more now than I do in summer, I have to be honest. So this is something to consider when you are testing it out. Beautiful, beautiful. And guys, even more so, the bath and body range of Paris Biarritz, the shower gel, the body lotion, they're divine. They almost smell better than the perfume <laughs> because they're more creamy, they have a bit more substance to them. Um, Longevity, very short-lived, very short. Projection, very short-lived, stays very close to the skin. It's literally a water to refresh yourself. This ain't a projection beast. This ain't a silage uh, longevity monster. This is something to wear for yourself for the pleasure of having the most beautifully, luxuriously curated, high-quality, light ingredients in a perfume. All of these citruses are super, super light, but they are very high-quality. So... It's like giving you a little gift. It's like, you know, when you drink an espresso, a coffee, it's, it's a quick, it's a shot of an espresso. You know, it's Italian espresso. We're talking not American, Italian espresso shot, you drink it, done. That's kind of what this is. It's an espresso shot of the best quality citruses you can have combined together, rounded up by this Neroli, Lily of the Valley, and a bit of white musk and patchouli. Patchouli in here, you guys, that's... It's not there, really. I mean, maybe the patchouli is just there to give us a bit of a vibe of something wet, but that's it. So that's what it is. Paris Biarritz is quality over screeching quantity. It's reduced to its essential citrusy zestiness, super high quality, but very delicate and very light. Anyway, um, Paris Biarritz is worth every single penny if you're ready to have something light but concentrated in quality. And it's and I know it's a it's a paradox because you, you think, wait a minute, so it's expensive, but it doesn't last long. But it's really good quality, but doesn't but how can good quality not last long? It can. Good quality doesn't have to last long. Who says, you know, it's our society that thinks that, okay, so if it's good quality, it has to last long. The duration of something really good is not directly proportionate to its quality. Never, it never was. I don't know when it became a thing in our society to think that way, but it's not. Sometimes the best things in life last just a nanosecond. 
it's the way it is. And this thing is that good, but it is that short-lived. It's already kind of fleeting and fading already now. However, if you're looking for a warm embrace, a cuddly, olfactive experience, Paris Biarritz is not for you. Paris Biarritz is hyper-sophisticated, conceptual citrus fragrance. That's what it is. Good quality, lasts a short time. Nothing more to it. Nothing more to it. Let me get to the chats, see what you guys are saying. Um, so Melly loves it. Robert doesn't like it. I simply do not like citruses, says Robert. Uh, Melly says I wear it all the time. Uh, oh, see, citrus is my thing, says Melly to Robert. David says, I love it, but it's so fleeting. <laughs> Robert says, and I find a lemon too much. Lori says, that is only one. That is the only one that I do not have out of that collection. I have Riviera, and I hate it. Why do you have it if you hate it? But I love Deauville and Venice. Audrey says, oh, no, Robert, don't like the, <laughs> the citrus says. Time to mask up says, I just got Great Britain from Roja. Uh, Rich Mitch says, I thought uh, of buying one of these. Rich, test them out first. They are not long-lasting, but they are really good quality. The Udo Pantograph says, I'm curious. A fact of story says, I don't remember trying this one. I have Paris Venice that I love, though. I love Paris Venice, too. But Paris Deauville is my favorite of the four, of the bunch. Fleeting, for me, it stays for a long time, says Robert. I gave away the sample, though. Oh, well, good for you. So that means on your skin, it really works very well. Daniel says, I really like Biarritz, though I haven't bought it yet. I like Deauville the most. Me too. Deauville is my, the one I use the most for now. You know what I mean? Um, I hope Chanel will release bath products for Riviera. I, Lucas, I think they already have. They have released body products for Riviera. I think they have. It is very fleeting, but I just spritz it on all day long, says Melly. <laughs> um, the lotion is so good too, says Melly. Great Britain is a more leather, more enamelic, queer de rossi plus violet type of s uh, scent. Um, Emilia says, I drank up my bottle of Deauville and never repurchased it. Oh, why not? It's so good. Debbie says, yes, the Lezou with matching lotions have lasting power. They really do. They really, really do. Um, Melly says, I remember when the Lezou came out, we were so excited. I'm still excited. I love them to bits. But now I have them. It's not like, you know, not the same type of excited as I was when, when they were about to come out, but I'm still excited. I have ordered Deauville, says Aisha. Oh, you're going to love it. Oh, Deauville is amazing. Uh, Olfactive Story says, I cannot wait for Paris Edinburgh. I'm really curious about that one. Me too. Super excited about Paris Edinburgh. Can't wait for it to come out. It has zesty opening, fresh and chic, uh, Helen says, about P uh, Paris uh, Biarritz, I think. Um, Emilio says, I don't really care for Paris Biarritz. I only love Deauville. Audrey Jane says, Edinburgh was that? No, uh, Paris Edinburgh hasn't come out yet. Melly says, Biarritz is very refreshing, but so elegant at the same time. It is very elegant. It's very, very elegant. I thought Jacob said Edinburgh as in Scotland. Yes, I did. I did say Edinburgh as in Scotland, uh, but uh, the French pronounce it uh, differently, no? <laughs> um, I'm glad they have smaller bottles now. Yeah, the 50 mil, the 50 mil are also available. Lily of the Valley can, a Lily of the, a Lily of the Valley can be warm, not in this case. Not in this case. I'm getting um, to like bitter fragrances, says Melly. Yeah, I mean, it takes time, right? But it's like kind of like the ultimate, it's like the last instance. Bitter fragrances are like the things you start appreciating the last in your life, like that after you've, it's easy to like sweet fragrances. It's easy to fall in love with the vanillas, you know, but it's harder to learn to, to understand the bitter ones. And of course, those come kind of last in the olfactive scale. Uh, are these so, are there, no, there are no so, jam, there are no soaps for the lezou. No, unfortunately. Uh, Emilia says, there are shower gels and lotions. Yes. David says, I struggle with the top notes of Paris Deauville, but I use it nonetheless. I mean, I guess it's the basil that you're not liking. Lucas says, no body lotion and, no, yeah, just body lotion and body wash. Debbie says, Lily of the Valley is Mouguet de Bois by Henri Robert for me, at least. 
Yeah, but the Mouguet de Bois, that is Lily of the Valley uh, in French. Jack, I do hope Edinburgh smells of rain. They say it should, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I mean, it says, Aisha, I know you love Cristal. This is in the same lane, but obviously more simple. Yeah, that's true, Emilio. It does have that flair. I love the city of Edinburgh, of Edinburgh, so I am really hoping that I love the perfume, says Daniel. I do too. Muscap says, Riviera, Paris Riviera is the only one I don't like. Hmm. What else we have? I love the city of Edinburgh. Oh yeah, Edinburgh in French is Edinburgh. Edinburgh, like Edinburgh. Edin Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> okay, MK. Thank you for telling us. So that was my review of Paris Biarritz. I hope you've enjoyed it, you guys. It's worth trying out, not worth blind purchasing because it is a pricey fragrance. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you uh, like my channel, please consider subscribing to it or also joining me, becoming a member today and getting extra perks for that. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Decaball spelled together. And by the way, you see all the wonderful here. No, there there <laughs> all the wonderful uh, list of, of patrons and members that are helping out the fashion bunker thank you guys so much for supporting the fashion bunker you can also subscribe to my channel because i always say this this is so bizarre but only eight percent of the people who are watching return watchers people who keep coming back to my channel to watch only eight percent of that 100 percent is subscribed i'm like it doesn't cost you nothing to push the subscription button it does help out the channel a lot but it doesn't cost you nothing. So that's something to consider. Uh, you can also follow me when we're talking about Chanel on my Chanel dedicated Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, dedicated to all uh, things that uh, Chanel the brand is doing today, as well as my private Chanel collection. Then I also have an Instagram profile called Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together where I talk about Chanel's life, everything that she did and achieved during her lifetime leading up to 1971, which is the year she passed away, unfortunately, um, in January. So this is actually the month that she passed away. The month that I'm filming this video is the month that she actually passed away in 1971, 89, 40 years ago. So we're celebrating Coco's life uh, in this year, more than her death, obviously, because uh, the minute she passed away, she actually became eternal, or that's at least how I see it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Enjoy perfumes, no matter what they are. I'm just looking down right now. I just saw it again. I'm like, in awe how beautiful the colors are of Paris, Venice, Deauville, Riviera, and Biarritz. They're actually really beautiful together. Uh, you can also layer them, believe it or not. They are layerable. Uh, but that would be a video on its own because it would take a long time to kind of try to mix them and blend them and figure out how they work together. But that's also something to think about. Let me know in the comment section down below, and if you, down below if you would be interested in that sort of video as well. Until then, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.